Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Ryder and this is the SoCal Guide to Quick and Easy Composting brought to you by Waste Management. This is geared for milder climates and smaller spaces, although the principles will apply to any size yard or pile. Um, I'm going to show you that it's not rocket science, it's rot science. It's also the most important thing you can do for the planet in your own backyard. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing you need is a bin. Although back in the old days, they just used a big old pile in the backyard and threw everything in it. Back when they had a lot of acreage, lived on farms, grew their own food. We live in much smaller spaces now and have much smaller yards, so it's best to use a bin. Also, um, an upright pile will give you more airflow and help the pile to break down um, quicker and also keep the critters away. So I've got a couple samples here today to show you. This one here is the Eco Composter by Friskars. The city of Irvine is giving these away if you attend one of the classes. And this, well, supplies last. So it's super easy. All you do is lift it up. It comes collapsed, you lift it up. It's made with a mesh, so lots of airflow, which is great for breaking down. And then it's got a lid with a few little holes in it. And then these little stakes, you stake it into the ground to keep it in place. Now it has no bottom, okay? And most composters are going to have no bottom on them, okay? The next one is the Soil Saver, and this is what we're going to use for our demo today. And the Soil Saver is a rigid plastic bin. It's got a top that locks in place, which is great for uh, keeping the critters out and uh, dogs and whatnot. And it's uh, also open on the bottom. There's no bottom on it at all. And it has a little drawer at the bottom that lift up for harvesting your compost. And there's also one on the back. And then if you only have impervious pavement, like concrete or brick like this, which means no drainage, then you probably don't want one that's got to open on the bottom, unless you want to put a screen on it or use some mesh, wire mesh, you could do that. If you do, like I, that's how I have it, I use a trash can. This does have a bottom on it, and uh, all you want to do is drill some holes on it, and you can repurpose an old can. Just drill a few holes for drainage at the bottom, and maybe a few on the side for air. It will take a little longer in a trash can, but you know, you're still composting and you're doing something good for the planet. So a few other options for bins out there. There are tumblers, which are like the big cylinders. They tend to be expensive. And if you've got uh, brick or concrete or some other kind of impervious pavement, like schoolyards and things, they work out, they work out really well for that. There's also chicken wire. You can do your, you know, just get some chicken wire from the hardware store and make a circle. And uh, you can build your own with, with old wood scraps. So there's lots of different things. Just check out online for other options. Once you've selected your bin, then you just need to figure out the location. So if it's an open bottom bin like this, you want to make sure you have it on dirt or grass or gravel, somewhere where it can drain. If you put it on pavement, you know, it's going to make a bit of a mess. You could always put a little bit of screen or something underneath it. If you've got a tumbler or you're using the trash can method, you can literally put those anywhere. Um, the other thing you need to decide is do you want to have it in full sun, part sun or shade? You know, we have small spaces here, so I always say put it wherever it fits or wherever, you know, you want to have it. Because if it's in the shade, it's just going to take a little bit longer to break down. If it's in the sun, it'll break down faster but it'll, it'll dry out a little faster, so you just want to add a little more water. So either way, it works wherever you have room. Once you've selected your bin and your location, you're ready to start. So what's the recipe? Very simple. It's air, water, and the material. And the material consists of two things, greens and browns, two categories. I mean, it's going to be about two-thirds browns to one-third greens, more or less. So the browns are going to be things like dried leaves, okay, and shredded newspaper, shredded office paper, straw, and uh, things like toilet paper, rolls, cardboard. And then the greens are going to be cl clippings from your yard. The greens are the wet and smellies. The browns are the dry, dead things. The browns are high in, in carbon. The greens are high in nitrogen. T together, they create they create the compost, and they make it go faster. So if we get the right combinations, you're gonna have faster compost. 
So the greens, again, are the yard waste, the green, you know, fresh clippings, and then the food waste, okay? It's something we all have lots of. So food waste and the yard waste are the greens. Okay, so what you're gonna do is just literally start putting in there. You don't have to do a special layer. You can just put it in, and then we're gonna talk about the balance and, and the, the quantities to, to get the right combinations. Okay, so we're just gonna start throwing in the browns and just line the bottom of your bin with some dried leaves or, and or newspaper. You know, you can put whatever you have. If you only have newspaper, newspaper's fine too. Or dry leaves, dry leaves are great, but I, I don't really have very many dry leaves. I have a giant pine tree, so I get, um, most people get trash picked up from their house. I get it delivered to my house, so my friend drops off bags of dry leaves. So that's what I use for my compost, and I keep it next to my compost. Um, you can also just use your shredded, shredded um, office paper. Again, just white paper, not coated colored paper. And also straw is fine. If you got like a, a small bale of straw, it'll last you for a really long time for your compost. You also could put things like cardboard. Again, you want to make it shredded up. Toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, any kind of like paper board and cardboard. But again, you want to make sure you shred it up before you put it in. So let's just add a few more little items into the pile. And... And... You can wet it also, that helps to, before you put it in, but we're going to wet it after. So that's the browns, and now we're going to put some greens in. <clears throat> so you've got things like coffee grounds, you've got, you know, all kinds of clippings from your kitchen. I've got, let's see, some cabbage. I've got citrus. Don't go too crazy on citrus, but you can put citrus in your, in your bin. Let's see, I've got some, some carrot peeling, some onions, some eggshells. Uh, I like to crunch them up before I put them in there because they do take a long time to break down. Avocado skins, squash skins. Um, and then, you know, in your kitchen, it's nice to have your, your stuff in a, a little like Tupperware or Rubbermaid type thing with a lid on it. And it keeps the smells away. Or there's all kinds of bins you can buy online. Uh, this one actually has a filter and you can change the filter out. And there's like metal ones, there's crocs out of ceramics, there's all kinds of different options out there. So this one I have, and I keep this in my kitchen. You can also put paper towels in, even though those are a brown, but you know, they, they're usually mixed in with your food waste. Let's see, pizza crust. So any kind of bread type, type of thing, tortillas, leftover pasta. What else? Banana peels, all that kind of stuff. From your kitchen. Just make sure it's from, the, from a plant, okay? Not from a, no animal products, okay? Why no animal products? Because animal products will attract the critters. So you don't want critters coming to your pile. You want to make sure it's a critter-free space. So in addition to your food waste, another green is the yard clippings that are like more fresh and not the dried out ones. So they can be trimmings from your bushes and hedges. Also, it can be like deadheaded flowers or just, you know, flowers that have fallen off, you know, your, your plants. Those can all go in. Grass. So grass is one of those things that if you put too much in your bin, it's going to be really wet and smelly because there's a lot of nitrogen and it's very wet. So I tell people if they're going to put grass in the bin to let it sit out and dry before you put it in. The best use of grass is to do what we call grass cycling, which really is just leaving the grass clippings on your lawn and let them break down. They will break down very quickly and it does add uh, nutrients to your lawn and, and help fertilize your lawn the natural way. So that's the best, thing, best use of it, but occasionally if you want to put some in, go ahead. I would just don't put too many in and let them dry out first. So any of these green type things, leaves and so forth, can go into your, into your bin. Now that you've got all your material in the pile, you've got your greens, your browns, two-third browns, one-third greens, um, we need to put some air and water, the other part of the recipe. The air and the water are really important because this is a living, breathing system. And you've got the FBI in there working. That's the fungi, the bacteria, and the invertebrates. Okay? The uh, invertebrates are the worms, and the fungi and bacteria are things you can't see, but they're working really hard and doing a lot of the work and breaking everything down and so we're gonna make sure they get a little water. Your pile will break down a lot faster if you do add water and air. 
So water, you could just, you know, use, uh, you know, from the hose, or if you want to really step it up to like a more gourmet compost, you can use uh, fancy bottled fizzy water. Just kidding. Don't waste your fizzy water. But yeah, just get the hose or just a watering can and put some water in there. You want it moistened. You don't want it really drenched wet, okay? And then once you've got everything in there, you want to mix it up. So go ahead and take a pitchfork or a shovel or whatever you have. Um, and that's as long as you get some air into the pile. If you have a tumbler, you just turn it around and that's how you get the air in the pile. Another little tool that's really handy is the aerator. And the aerator, you just pop it into the pile. It's sort of like a pogo stick and it gets all kinds of tunnels and allows the, allows the moisture and the worms and the air to get down there and break up the pile. I like this especially for the trash can method because they're not very big and it's hard to get a pitchfork or a shovel into a trash can. But if you've got a bigger bin like this, a, trash, a uh, shovel or a, a pitchfork will work just fine. So based on the amount of time you put into your compost, whether you're an enthusiastic composter and you have it within you know, three or four months or you're a lazy composter and it takes a long time, the compost is not going to look anything like what you put in it. So it's not going to look like banana peels, it's not going to look like dry leaves, it's going to look like rich, thick, beautiful compost and it's going to be wonderful for your garden. And this is what you're going to put around your plants. Okay. So if you are really enthusiastic and you're doing it all the time and you really find yourself that you become obsessed with composting, we've, we've discovered that a lot of people really do get carried away and that's okay. This is a really great obsession to have. What's gonna happen is the bottom of your bin is gonna be the stuff that's done first, okay? Even though you're mixing it up and you're adding stuff, the finished stuff will still be at the bottom. So this kind of bin has a drawer at the bottom and you can open it up. Another method with the, with the trash cans, which we'll show you in a minute, is doing the two trash cans or two bins. And the two bin method is very simple. You fill one up, okay, and when that's full, you leave it, okay? It's simmering, let's say. And you can add water and air to it, and that'll help it break down faster. When that one's full, you go to the next one, and you start working on that one. And while you're working on filling up that second bin, the first one is all starting to just break down. You're not adding any more material to it. It's just going to break down, and then you're going to have one bin filled with finished compost within a matter of a few months. So that's the two bin method. It's just an easy way to harvest it, and then when that, sec that first bin is all broken down, you can take it out and put it in your garden, put it in a separate container, and then when that second bin is full, you can go back and you'll have to go to your empty bin and start the process over again. So that's the two bin method. It's just another way to do composting, and it's also an, an easy way to do it. Leave these items out. Meat, fish, and bones, treated yard waste, dairy, pet waste, oil and grease, diseased infected plants, treated wood and charcoal, glossy coated paper, plastic, metal, and glass, diapers, chemically sprayed plants, and weeds that have gone to seed, and bioplastics. Limit these items. You can add them to your bin, but in small quantities. Eucalyptus, no more than 20% of your bin. Pine needles are too acidic. Oleander, then Bermuda and devil grass. Those seeds may show up um, in your finished compost. There are so many benefits to composting. One, you're making an organic fertilizer from trash to treasure for your, you know, black gold for your, your plants, which provides micronutrients and all kinds of health food basically for your plants and helps them grow faster and provides a stronger root system for your plants. Saves water. Compost holds eight times of what sandy soil will hold. So if you've got a sloped yard and you put compost in it, you're not gonna have an erosion problem. Also when we have our drought, which, you know, in Southern California, that's a huge issue. It's, you know, you're not going to have to water nearly as much if you're adding compost to your soil. Also reduces waste. About 20 to 30 percent of what we throw away into the landfill is organic waste. By recycling that here, we're keeping it out of the landfill. When it's in the landfill, it, it releases methane gas, and that methane gas is a greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change. When you compost it, it actually sequesters the carbon into the pile. 
so you're not releasing the carbon or the methane into, into the atmosphere. Um, and also replaces chemical fertilizers. All those herbicides, pesticides, and things are made with petrochemicals. So if you're putting something organic, and when it rains and uh, we water our plants, when you're putting chemical fertilizers there, it's going to just drain into the street, into the storm drain, and into our waterways, and, and that's going to pollute our water. So using co organic compost with just with our food scraps and yard scraps is the way to go, and it's the best thing for the planet. Okay, so you've got your finished compost. What are we going to do with it? Look at this. This is a gardener's dream, and this is what the, the effort is for. So now we're going to give it to our plants, who are so excited to have some super rich nutrients. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to layer it around my brand new lemon tree. And hopefully I'll get some more lemons growing here. And I'm just going to layer it in. You can mix it in with the soil, okay? Um, or you can just layer it on top, nice and thick, as a mulch. So either way, you can put it around your trees, okay? Uh, any plants, you can put it, you know, anywhere you want. If you've got a veggie garden, like a raised veggie garden, just put an inch every year before or every time you're going to plant. Or if you've got potted plants, it makes wonderful uh, soil amendment for your potted plants. I would not use more, like right now I've got potting soil in here, so now I'm just going to add some compost in there. So I've got, I've got three quarters potting soil, I'm going to put one quarter of, uh, of compost in there. And then just make sure you mix it in really good, because the compost is just a little too thick to, to do for potted plants. It's going to be uh, not going to have enough drainage. So that's why you want to just maybe add it into your potting soil as a, an, a, a soil amendment. If you um, are doing trash can composting or you live in an apartment or a townhome and you don't have any garden or any plants, compost would be an amazing gift to give to somebody. I mean, who wouldn't want some of this black gold? So put it in a, in a container, put a little bow on it, and you've got an amazing uh, hostess gift, Christmas gift, housewarming gift. And, uh, you know, like I said, you can't be too rich, too thin, or have too much compost. Next, I'm going to show you my two bin compost system. Before I do that, I want to go over some frequently asked questions from new composters. Number one, what if my pile smells? That's the most common question. People are afraid of smells, and sometimes your pile might smell if you put too much food in it and not enough browns. So what you need to do, your pile is probably too wet, so you need to add more browns and mix the pile up. So both of those things you should do if your pile starts to smell. Also, when you're putting food into your, into your um, compost bin, don't be a dump and run composter. Make sure you put the compost in, then either bury it or cover it with some browns. So what I do is I keep a trash bag or a container of browns next to my bin, and then when I put my food in, I put the, I put the browns on top of it to cover them up. And that way, food's not gonna be exposed. Number two, your pile is not breaking down. Well, it's probably because you have too many browns. So you might want to add some more greens to the pile. The greens, the nitrogen, is the fuel for your compost pile. And that'll help things um, speed up and start to break down. Number three, what if I get weird bugs in my, my compost pile? Well, you might get something. You're going to get worms for sure. But you also might get some June bug larva, some fig beetle larva. But those are larvae of a beetle, and they will eventually fly away. They're all part of a living compost system. They all help make it break down. Those are decomposers. All good. Ants. What if I get ants in my compost pile? Well, you're probably not going to get them in your pile. You might get them around them if there's moisture and it's really hot in the summer. And if, that's, if that's the case, you might want to put a little chili powder or borax around the perimeter of your bin, not inside your bin. Number five, rodents. This is a common worry for people before they start a compost pile, but they shouldn't be a problem. They're not really attracted to a compost pile as long as you bury your food scraps. You shouldn't have a problem. Um, having a locked bin is helpful, but rodents really aren't attracted to a compost pile if everything is well buried. So here's my two bin system. Um, I have Mostly patio. I don't have a lot of room, so I keep these two trash cans next to my other trash cans on the side of my house. And these are, of course, enclosed on the bottom. And the way the two bin system works is I have one bin and it's empty. This one was 
full of compost about six months ago. And I stopped adding it. Once it got full, I just stopped adding and let it just all simmer and turn to compost. Okay? And while I was letting it simmer and turn to compost, I came and started my new bin. So this is my new bin, and for the past few months, I've been adding to it, and, and this is my bin in progress. So I'm adding food waste to this, adding dry material, and making compost. In the meantime, this is just cooking, and I'm not adding food. All I'm doing is occasionally I'll mix it up, and I'll occasionally add a little water. The more I do that, the faster it's going to break down. This is ready to go. This is ready to go in the garden. There might be a few little items here and there that haven't broken down. And if that's the case, you know, something like avocado pits and peach pits and whatnot, corn cobs, you just throw them back in to keep cooking. But for the most part, you know, you might see some seeds or some eggshells, but that's ready to go into your pile, uh, or excuse me, into your yard, or you can give it away, and then it'll be empty, and then you start the two bin system again. This will be full, this will be empty. When this is full, leave it, go to the next one, and start building your new pile. And one more thing, you can use this method with any kind of bin. It can be um, not just trash cans, it can be any bin. The idea of having two bins is again, you fill one up, leave it, go to the next one, fill it up, and by the time that second one is even half full, the first one will be completely turned to compost. So it works with any kind of bin. And that's it. Composting is quick, easy, and fun. It's a great thing you can do for the planet in your own backyard. Be on the lookout for my worm compost video and happy composting.